So first of all, welcome everyone. I am Michelle Scaff. 15 years ago, I was introduced to this breakthrough in science <laughs> as this product was being pulled from a retail shelf because it needed people to help others learn how we can change human health and animal health forever. So I am incredibly excited to be joined this evening by Dr. Lee Seward and Bonnie Heath, two leaders with years of experience, expertise, and passion on it, educating on advances in the science of animal health. Before I introduce them formally though, I'm gonna share a little about the company and the first human study that started it all. So LifeVantage is a biotech company specializing in the science of aging through cell activation. As a publicly traded company on the NASDAQ, we have major institutions who are invested with us in our future. And with almost a quarter of a billion in sales annually, we have attracted top leaders to our company and board, including Aaron Brockovich, who learned about this science and became an advocate, not only for the environment outside, but inside our bodies as well. So let's dig into the science of aging. Dr. Aubrey de Grey, a leading geneticist from Cambridge, states that it's not a mystery. Aging is just simply damage to your body, which is damage to your cells. And the single biggest problem that drives the greatest amount of damage is the air we breathe. Oxygen equals oxidative stress. An apple is the perfect illustration of oxidative stress because we all know what happens when we cut an apple in half. We leave it on the counter. It is oxygen that causes it to turn brown, shrivel up and age. We also know what happens when we put that apple in a plastic bag and we seal out the oxygen. It lives longer, but we can't live in a plastic bag, which is why, as you see our cells on the right here, getting damaged from oxidative stress leads to all of the damaging problems that show up later in life. So a quick question. If you could get the, take that cell on the right and reverse it back to the healthier cell on the left, would that be something you'd be interested about? Because that's the science we're here to talk about. This is the first human study that proved we could reverse aging down to the level of a young child in everyone in 30 days. How did we do that? Well, when we're young, our cells are making antioxidant enzymes called glutathione, SOD, and catalase. And we're traveling on that blue line of healthy cells because our cells are making them and they're protecting us from this damage. But in our late teens, our cells stop making these antioxidant enzymes and we start traveling up that red line of oxidative stress, aging, disease, and damage. So what does Pretandem do? It activates a switch. Think of a light switch in every cell in every mammal called NRF2, which turns the lights back on and gets your cells making that glutathione and other antioxidant enzymes again, which is how in 30 days, a 20 year old's oxidative stress was reduced by 20% because the cell made a few of these antioxidant enzymes to bring that damage back down to the level you'd see when you were young. But the same pill in an 80 year old, way at the top of that red line, reduced oxidative stress by 70% in 30 days, from the top of that red line down to the blue line. The cell had to make a ton of antioxidant enzymes to get that damage down to the same level as that 20 year old. So a quick question, would it be better to start reducing oxidative stress when you're in your twenties or thirties, keep that damage from happening sooner? Or most importantly, look, think of the 80 year old. It is never too late to get started. And this is why we're here to help you understand this science and start now. After that first human study was released, leading universities like Harvard, Ohio State, the American Heart Association, the National Institute on Aging, they all knew this was a breakthrough in science. It was the first time that any study proved we could get activate our cells to go back to work the way they did when we were young. And each of these studies proved that it not only reduces oxidative stress, but other causes of damage and aging, activating other genes that help our cells survive other kinds of stresses, whether it's our heart, our brain, our skin, and that is why you can go to Google Scholar or pubmed.gov, and it doesn't matter whether you type in oxidative stress, NRF2, or pretandem, you're going to receive research on how this protects your heart, your skin, your kidneys, your lungs, your brain, your immune system, your eyes, your organs, your blood vessels. Thousands of studies today on activating NRF2 and the importance for human health. This is the difference from supplementation. Why did we start taking antioxidants and blueberries and oranges and vitamin C? 
because our cells weren't making it. That's the one and done model versus turning on that fire hose, getting your cell back to work. This is why we're here and how we reduce oxidative stress, not just in humans, but in animals. Our first breakthrough in animal health was Pitandum. And I'm excited today um, that um, Dr. Lee Seward and Bonnie Heath are here to talk about not just reducing oxidative stress in humans, but oxidative stress in animals, dogs and horses. So let me introduce Dr. Lee Seward. He's a doctor of veterinary medicine. Uh, after time in his clinical practice, he spent the majority of his career in research. He was responsible for the development of a number of successful products, including HeartGuard for dogs, Zemectrin for horses, Epronex for cattle, and others. He's made a significant impact on the health and well being of animals. With his wife, Rebecca, they have been involved with LifeVantage since 2013. He served on our science advisory board, one of 10 leaders in this company to our doctors in this company to have that honor and privilege. You're also going to hear from Bonnie Heath III, who with his wife, Kim, own Bonnie Heath Farms in Ocala, Florida. They are respected in the thoroughbred industry for breeding, raising, training, racing top horses, including champion and horse of the year, Holy Bull. As well as their own health benefits on these products, the Heaths have very positive experience using LifeVantage products with their horses. We are honored for both of you to be here with us today and sharing your wisdom and experience for animal health. We will take questions at the end, so please add them to the chat and um, we'll get to them then. Let me stop sharing and let me open this screen up. Woo, love that you're all here. I'm gonna turn this over to you, Lee. Oops. Thanks, Michelle. I appreciate it. I appreciate uh, uh, the opportunity uh, to join you uh, in speaking with all these people and friends from LifeVantage. Uh, what a great honor. It's an honor uh, to be with you uh, Michelle, because uh, you're such a great leader, such a great caring person, and such a great friend. Uh, so it's a, indeed a pleasure. And it's also an honor to be uh, on this with Bonnie. Uh, Bonnie and Kim are friends of ours since the beginning of our journey here with LifeVantage. And in fact, uh, our connection goes even further than that, because Kim was working on trials with uh, uh, Zymectrin at uh, the University of Florida horse farm uh, in near Ocala uh, when I was doing those trials and I met her at that time. So uh, six degrees of separation is amazing. Um, as Michelle said, uh, animals are as affected <clears throat> as humans by oxidative stress. And oxidative stress, uh, this is demonstrated uh, well, actually, any living thing that uses oxygen in its metabolism has oxidative stress. But we want to talk about animals. Um, and to, to, to point this uh, out, I, uh, if you look at uh, Google Scholar and search oxidative stress in animals today, you'll find close to 4 million citations. If you just search oxidative stress in dogs, uh, there's uh, well in it over, uh, actually close to 300,000 and horses, you'll come up with 58, uh, close to 59,000. So this shows that oxidative stress is uh, a real serious issue uh, in animals and uh, well-documented. 13, uh, in 2013, uh, my, my wife and I were both suffering some of the common things you see in uh, while you're aging. Uh, more importantly, uh, we had our loyal, wonderful dog, Sheila, who was nearing that time in her life that all uh, pet guardians uh, hate. And that is uh, making a decision about the quality of life of your loved, loyal friend. Uh, and that's where we were. Uh, we had to take a break and, and um, uh, we're going to a family wedding and happened to be sitting next to a young lady uh, that was chatting with my wife and pulled out her iPad and showed uh, her that video that, that Michelle referred to, um, the ABC News uh, report on uh, LifeVantage and uh, ProTandem and PetTandem. 
Uh, pet tandem has the same mechanism of action as pro tandem. And as uh, both of those products, pro tandem and pet tandem, have scientific documentation that show that they reduce oxidative stress. And fortunately, the data on pets, on, on, on dogs, showed that uh, the, one of the benefits of reducing oxidative stress in dogs was to improve and support cognitive function and mobility, two of the serious problems that our dog Sheila was suffering from. So after being introduced to it, I did my due diligence, found exactly what I just talked about, that animals were susceptible to oxidative stress and that animals also had the same biochemistry as humans do to fight oxidative stress, that is NRF2 activation. So with that, armed with that, I joined LifeVantage and uh, never looked back and saw some amazing things happen. First with Sheila, our dog, who was at a point where I would have to carry her out to do her business. Uh, she was starting to have accidents in the house, wandering around, not knowing where she was. After a few months on pet tandem, the accidents went away. Sheila started uh, returning to her, her mental acuity that she'd had before. Um, she took care of her mobility improved. She could take care of herself. In fact, after about six months, Sheila and I were out in the barnyard, headed out to feed the horses at night. Uh, Becky had been traveling, so I was by myself, and uh, uh, it was dark, it was summertime, and I turned on the uh, barnyard lights and walked out there. Sheila was out checking out all the little haunts for the little animals out there, the rabbit holes, etc. <clears throat> all of a sudden, I saw something, some movement, and something ran across the barnyard. It was a fox with Sheila in close uh, chase behind. And that was an amazing thing. We got an extra year and a half at least with Sheila of quality life. And you have to ask yourself, how much is that really worth? Uh, the joy that, that dogs bring us in our lives and to be able to have more time with them. Uh, it's, I just can't imagine anything greater uh, for, for the joy of life seeing the joy in your dog and having that joy transferred to you. So that was just something that uh, uh, solidified the fact that I was all in on this company and Nerf2 activation. So uh, I've got many stories, but I think uh, we want to hear from Bonnie now, don't we, Michelle? I know. <laughs> well, first of all, thank you for that story. And, and uh, Bonnie, um, with horses, can you talk about, you know, why you decided and what oxidative stress is for horses and the impact? And then, the yeah. Thanks, Michelle, and, and uh, honor to be on here. It's uh, bar, a, bar a saying from an old friend, you could go to a worm wrestle with Lee and you could have a good time. So that's, uh, <laughs> think, think about that. It'll get you later. Anyway, uh, Kim and I were at a thoroughbred sale at Saratoga, New York. Uh, August of 2012, minding our own business, and we were approached by Debbie Crowell, who we'd known for 25 years at the time, and she was all beside herself about something, and we could care less, and she gave us some information, and we went home, and we didn't think about it until we saw her eight months later at a sale here in Ocala, and uh, backing up real quick, my family's raised thoroughbreds for over well over 60 years, almost 70 years now, and my father and his partner for for uh, those of you who care, his horse, but their horse won the Kentucky Derby in 1956. So this Saturday, we're looking at uh, whatever that is, 68 year anniversary of Needles, first Florida red to win the Kentucky Derby. So uh, I was into horses from that time on as, as a little boy. But uh, we're minding our own business, saw Debbie, didn't care what she had. Eight months later, we run into her out here at OBS and she looks totally different. And we walked up to her and, and Debbie, what are you doing? And she grins and she says the same damn thing I told you about in Saratoga. And, and uh, of course, we were too dumb to listen. She didn't say that part. But anyway, um, we had her over, watched the ABC video, and we're all in. We don't know why. But we're all in. We're not big joiners as a rule. Three months, uh, pardon me, three weeks to the day later, it was the day of the Preakness in 2013, our best thoroughbred mare had a uh, 
had a stillborn fall the day before on Friday. And pregnant this morning, she's got full-blown uh, laminitis in all four feet. And she's locked up as bad as we've ever, Kim and I had ever seen. And uh, called the vet. He came treated her with Western medicine, which uh, our experience with Western medicine is not all that great with this particular problem. Um, Kim was, had been smart enough a few days ahead of this to give him some information, unknowing what was coming, uh, about NRF2 activation. Uh, he read it. He understood it. She shoves a bottle of these NRF2 pills in his hands and says, what about this? And he says, why not? Let's try it. And we said, how much? And he says, I don't know. He said, but I'll tell you this. He said, you give her this whole bottle right now. He said, there's nothing in here that's going to cause her any problem. He said, it's five herbs. So we dosed her by weight because we're like, say, we're three weeks into this. We don't know. But we know one thing. If we don't do something to do something quick, she's probably not going to make it. So we dosed her by weight. And as God is my witness, 36 hours later, about five or six o'clock on Sunday afternoon, the death look is gone from her eyes. She's clear eyed. She's looking out the top of her stall. She's nickering to her buddies out in the paddock, and she wants to live. She's stepping out of her ice tub. We had her in ice about 14 hours a day. And it was that quick and that dramatic, and I've never seen anything quite like it. Um, three On day three, which was Tuesday, they x-rayed her feet. Uh, there was no rotation of the coffin bone, and there was no sinking of the salt. And the vet said, I got to give you some more ab antibiotics. He said, I only gave you enough for three days because I didn't think she'd live three days. And I told him personally, I didn't think she'd make the first night. So she was 18 years old when this happened. Three, three more days go by. And uh, he comes out, and pulls the blood, calls us up in a couple hours. And he said, I got another vet close by that's going to come pull the catheter from her neck. He said, her blood worked perfect. And like I said, the next spring when she was 19, she got in full on one cover. She consequently uh, lived eight and a half more years from when the incident happened, had three, three healthy, nice foals. And um, can I tell you that, that the NRF2 activation did that? I can't tell you that, but I can tell you that the K-pen K and the uh, fluids and the DMSO and all the stuff that we use on a normal basis was the same. And the only uncommon denominator was the NRF2 activation. So and we've seen it work for a lot of other things. Um, anxiety and weaning mares from foals, tremendous help. Uh, sending weanlings or yearlings from Ocala up to Kentucky for a horse sale, which is about 750 miles. Uh, it's a lot to ask for them to, to behave normally, which is what NRF2 does. It normalizes as doctors. Dr. Norman used to, uh, Marvin used to say, um, it's a normalizer. And uh, to take a, a weaned baby, been weaned maybe a couple of months, and stick him on a trailer or a van, ship him up the road, put him on a sales ground with 800 or 1,000 mares and babies screaming and hollering, and you expect them to behave themselves, it's, it's an incredible thing to ask. But we went to see our, our weanling after he'd been on the sales ground uh, his first day, and he showed 93 times, which means they go in, put a shank on them in the stall, buff them off or knock them off with the brush, pick their feet if they need to pick them, bring them up, walk them up and back and forth for the uh, buyers, put them back in the stall 93 times. So we went to the stall that afternoon, figured he'd be laying in the middle of the stall asleep, passed out or whatever. He comes to the screen, greets us with his ears pricked, his eyes wide open, and he's ready to go for 94. So uh, I saw it happen. There's no nervous energy. It's just normal, good, healthy stuff. So that's all I got. Um, I believe in it. I'm, I've been in here, whatever it is, 11 years. So not the same as everybody else. Thank you. Thank you. I was going to say, uh, you know, these are the stories that make me cry, right? And I always am grateful for Mark Gordon, who said, it's not a miracle pill. It just wakes up the miracle that's inside of us and miracles happen. Um, and you know, that's why we're all here. So thank you for those stories. I know they touched everyone's heart. And um, I'm going to come back to you, Lee. Is there anything you want to share on the science or anything else um, uh, sure. before we turn it into questions? Sure. Thanks. Thanks, Michelle. Uh, I'd like to second what Bonnie said. Uh, we had a we had a mayor. Uh, actually, she was the last foal that had been born on our property. And uh, she had gone away to another family and then come back to us 
when she came back to us, uh, she had uh, she was extremely uh, fidgety. She was a very active and had a lot of anxiety, particularly uh, to do with food. Uh, so I, I think she'd been in a situation for several years where she probably had to be uh, fighting with the other horses to get to the uh, to get a meal. So uh, so she was so busy. She wasn't trying to hurt you, but it made you a little nervous to be on the ground with her. Uh, and we just had to be careful with her and everything was fine. Uh, we put her on uh, ProTandem and within a, a few weeks, she started settling down. That anxiety reduced. So similar to what Bonnie's talking about here uh, and, and, and uh, it just made a difference in, in how we could handle her and be around her. Um, so that was a great thing. Um, the other thing I want to say is that, you know, this morning um, I had the privilege of going to an honor flight send off a few, many of you might not know what honor flight is, but it's a program where uh, we take veterans, particularly we started with World War II veterans and now are working on Korea and Vietnam era veterans, taking them back to Washington, D.C. to see the memorials that were built in their honor. We, I started doing this back in 2008, and I was actively involved in the program for about 11 years. When we started in 2008, I had serious pain in my right hand, uh, stiffness in that hand, to the point where I couldn't shake hands. I had to have to wear a brace or something on that hand to prevent people from grabbing it and cranking on it. And for an old guy of my generation, that's kind of a blow not to be able to to shake hands with people. Um, fast forward to 2013, I started taking ProTandem and through a few months and, and after a period of time, um, I was uh, became uh, in charge of the honor flight program in our area. And uh, one of the last flights that I was in, when I was in charge, there were uh, 120 veterans and about 63 guardians helping with veterans needs on that flight. And I was able to shake hands with every single person on that flight and just think of what that, uh, what that means. So it's a serious, it's a really serious, serious benefit that we are providing to people with this product. Thank you, Lee. I love that story so much. And you. Um, and Bonnie, you know, oxidative stress, why is it bigger than animals, than humans? And then talk about whatever you want to talk about. Before. Why, why is it Why is it bigger than in humans than in animals? It's bigger. <laughs> it, oxidative stress is greater in animals than humans. Oh, oh but, well, they oxidize faster. Yeah. And, and I, I love it because... Uh, our horses or dogs or whatever we have uh, are not going to go to the University of Google and, and try to find a uh, disparaging remark. You know, it either works or it does not. And it, it's 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 going to work every time. We may not see where it's working. I can't say it, but but it's going to work every time. Uh, I got a quick story for you about Miss Pangea's older sister. She had a uh, she was about twenty five or six when this happened she had a uh, a sarcoid pop up on her side which is a growth and it was probably the side a little bit bigger than a quarter and it stuck out i have some pictures some, somewhere i posted them on facebook or whatever but it stuck out about probably a quarter of an inch and it was ugly i mean ugly it looked like a uh something from outer space or something it was on her side and she had been taken in rf2 if i'd take a tandem well we, we started, we took the true science number four, which whatever they call it, I don't remember, but uh, true science number four at the time is all we had. And we got Jesus' kid working for us to start rubbing it on, their twi on that sore twice a day. On day six, <laughs> it fell off in his hand. And I swear, I think he was going to, he looked over and I thought he was going to throw up. And I'm laughing at him. And I said, hey, Sus, you've been rubbing that for six days. <laughs> he said, I know, but here it is in my hand. And you know what? We we kept rubbing that stuff on there for a few more days. That thing has never, ever come back. And they routinely will come back often. 
and uh, here we are four or five years later, whatever it is, and saw her just a couple of days ago and uh, it has not come back. So, and that's where the skin, the uh, skin study came from LSU mm -hmm. is what it does. And uh, anyway, that's enough for me. Thank you. No, it's not. We, it's never enough, either of you to listen to you, but I love the stories and, and um, um, you know, I did, you know, for me, it was, you give it to an animal, there's, you know, there's no placebo. I mean, you see the results. And I remember when I went to a life vantage event right after um, we started giving it to our golden retriever who had, you know, was my husband called her the lemon dog and stinky ears and droopy, all pro kinds of problems. And by the time I came back four days later, he was giving it to her every day because it, it he said it works. And, and that's why I think it's the best. Animals are the best because they teach humans. Um yeah how it all works. So with that, let's just open us up to a few questions and I'll, I'll ask them to the two of you. Um, again, if you have any questions, um, please put them in the chat. So I'm going to start with this one. Sonia, thank you. Um, are there any published studies on equine use? Any case studies before and after? The well, yeah, uh, so I um, there is, uh, there are studies uh, that have been published uh, on, there's lots of studies that have been published on oxidative stress in horses uh, with a number of different uh, products used or, or ingredients used, antioxidants, et cetera, uh, that have various uh, benefits uh, to reduce oxidative stress, but none of them are all that effective. Um, we do not have a study specifically showing um, uh, that oxidative stress uh, is affected by our product, uh, by pet tandem or pro tandem, pro tandem particularly. Um, we do know uh, that from work that has been done that uh, pro tandem, uh, the ingredients at pro tandem uh, are safe in horses at elevated levels over well, prolonged periods of time we don't have any uh, real uh, studies that show, um, you know, that we're reducing oxidative stress. But I think I, I've heard Bonnie say this a number of times, um, you know, we have enough evidence from an experience from use that we know in certain circumstances, the horses benefit greatly from it. And, and in most cases, the explanation, um, uh, can be made uh, through the understanding of nerve two activation. So if you reduce oxidative stress, you expect certain results. And those are the things that people have been reporting time after time after time that they have seen, including the things that Bonnie has talked about. So while we, we can't say from a scientific standpoint that we have peer reviewed studies that show us exactly what happens um, and in all the conditions that we have experienced, uh, people are, uh, you know, we have a, a growing body of evidence from our anecdotal experience. Definitely. Bonnie? If, if, uh, if you know your horse, uh, you'll know, you'll notice the change. Uh, it's like Lee was talking about their mare that they got back. Uh, what, what happened with her anxiety and, uh, what we watch with with our horses uh, on a day-to-day -day basis from where they are when they start taking the product to to where they wind up and uh it's you know like i say weaning weaning moms and from babies uh tremendous help um it's it's just if you know your horse and and the other thing too is most people come to us and they got something catastrophic going on and they call us up say oh my horse has got uh Berry, berry, or whatever you know, whatever it is, it's terrible. And uh, what do I do? And I said, well, all I can tell you is, if it was my horse, and I'd, I'd give it, uh, you know, maybe three pills twice a day, and and watch him. And you're probably not going to have to stay at that level. But the, the the key is, it's very, very effective. It will cause no harm, and it's cheap. I mean, you, you're going to call the vet. I don't know where you guys live, but you call the vet around here, and he's going to hit you between the eyes. Probably, probably cost you fifty or hundred dollar, you know, vet charge just to show up. 
and then when he pulls out his little pad, then that that's really when it's fun. But anyway, that's uh, that's my take on on uh, on situations that arise in in the horse business is that uh, you can always back off. And you, if you know your horse, you'll know what normal is for that. And that's where we're going. We're going to try to get to normal, aren't we? Yep. <laughs> I have a, one of a, a doctor. She says, if you can eat a salad, you can take pretandum. And yeah. all this does, it doesn't change anything about your cells and how they function. It just wakes them up and gets them back to work. And we know that happens in humans. I have to say, um, the, there was a question on dosage. And in the very beginning with Dr. McCord, who knew nothing about animal health, right? Um, I have a friend here who had incredible results with herself and wanted to give it to her horse and asked how many to give. And, and Dr. McCord said, I don't know, based on their weight, 10 a day. Um, <laughs> and, and that horse in a month, not even a month, it was like ridiculous. The numbers, everything changed. It was like, she was like, what? Um, and then I met a group of horse people and said, you know, average horses, maybe a, one a day. Um, performance horses are going to be more and a sick horse, just like a sick human. When I'm sick, I take more than one a day, right? Because I know I want nerve tube working twice a day, taking care of me. But what would you say on the, I'm sorry, recommended dosage per weight for horses or recommended uh, dosage? I think you're right. One, one a day, uh, unless you got something going on. Um, I, I, I don't see any reason not to give them, uh, you know, get them not to give them, uh, just one a day. That's that's where I go. But if if you got an older horse, we had we had an old mare that was uh, 29 years old and getting very very arthritic, and we started her on one day. This is when we were brand new, and we gave her one a day. And uh, within about a month, the gal was living in the in the at the farm where we are or where we were at the time. She said, you won't believe what I just saw. I said, well, what'd you see? She said, oh, granny just ran across the paddock. You know, she could barely walk a month before. <laughs> and so we kept her on one a day at 29 until she was 30, maybe 30 and a half. And then she started getting a little gimpy again. And we bumped her up to two. And she lived to be in a, about another year. She lived to be 31, 31 and a half. And one day she lay down in the field and died. It was just, that was perfect. I mean, that's that's what we all, that's what we're all looking for. Let me go here and lay down and die if I'm going to die. Don't don't let me go to the hospital. But that's what she did. Thank you for that story. I have a friend who has a Frisian in town. And her horse that she loved and, you know, all of these shows and everything else she did was in the pasture and dying. And we ran into each other about a year ago. And she said, oh, my gosh, per tandem. And she gave that Frisian a half a pill. Ha! And the next day she went in and see it and she goes, he's like up and at the stall and like, like awake. And she said, I got in my car and I was so excited. I forgot to shut the paddock and the gate and, and I'm driving up the road to my house. And all of a sudden my horse is chasing after me. <laughs> a half a pill with a big Frisian. So, you know, yep. Lee, do you have anything to add on dosage? Yeah, I, I think one thing we should all be aware of and think about is that first off, we do not have a product for horses. The product is not, ProTandem is a human product and it's not labeled for horses. Now, all you horse people out there know, you use a lot of products that aren't approved or any uh, don't have any particular labeling for horses. And this is routine uh, throughout you know, animal health that there's a lot of over-the-counter medications and supplements, et cetera that we use um, based on empirical results. That is, we use them and we see the results and we grow our own body of evidence like we have with ProTandem and horses, where we have a serious experience over a broad range of, of uh, applications. We do know, we do, like I said, we do know that six a day for prolonged periods of time is safe in horses. You know, there's no, no evidence uh, of any problems. And as Michelle said, or as Bonnie said, you know, there's nothing in there that we would suspect of having a problem with the horses. I mean, and it, like Michelle said, it's basically, yeah, if the horse would eat hay, it, you know, pretend it was going to be, um, it's going to be safe too. So you just have to be aware of those, those issues and caveats. Um, as far as the dose goes, 
I think there's a couple of things we should be aware of too. You know, we, I said the biochemistry is the same in all animals as far as NERF2 activation um, and the, the role of oxidative stress, but the exposures are different. Um, many animals, let's say a horse, uh, if, a, if a horse is out on pasture, uh, has a stable uh, horse social relationship in that pasture, uh, well-fed, well-watered, et cetera, um, you may not see anything by giving them uh, a protandum. They're not stressed. I think where we can, can uh, really apply it is when we know the horse is going to be in a stress uh, condition, either because of some, something they're going through, we're going to be trailering them like Bonnie talked about. We're going to be putting them into some sort of uh, 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 area where they would be stressed from activity, um, eventing, riding, uh, showing, uh, et cetera. So, you know, and I think you have to lead a couple of weeks before those things take place. Um, but I think it's up to you whether you want a steady state dose that horse um, all the time. Uh, the dose itself, uh, you know, I think I've heard a lot of different recommendations, but we don't really uh, know other than what people have experienced. And I think, uh, like, like I said, I think that what people experience is different depending on what the horse is going through. So, you know, a couple a day for prolonged periods of time, people see results. And uh, sometimes you may have to go higher. Sometimes that you may not need to have it at that level. Bonnie probably has a lot more experience with this, but what people see, but the fact is, is that it's, it's an empirical process. Um, if you know the horse is heavily stressed, you need to put the dose up higher. Mm -hmm. Good. Yep. I was, I also wanted to add, just like we have Facebook communities with stories and science around human health. We also, there are a number of Facebook communities with many stories on, um, Per tandem and animal health or per tandem and animal health. So um, that's another way. The, st the stories are really, as you've shared your stories tonight, I mean, really, they're the most impactful, right? Science is how we make electricity, but the real result is, is what happens. Um, there's a question on um, uh, colic and a horse. Um, we haven't had a colic. Can you, can you <laughs> Just, no, we don't have every every horse in the herd on this, but we have most of them. Uh, we have not had a colic. We've had uh, some maybe preliminary, what might be, where you give a little blast of banamine and and hope for the best. And uh, we've had a couple of those, but no colics. How about EPM? Uh, no. We did have a, a an indirect experience with EPM. Uh, we talked. I think we texted about this. Um, uh, we had a, a guy that trains horses around here that had had an EPM issue with a horse, and it, it it was effective for him. But this is about third or fourth hand information, and I can't say that it does or doesn't. Um, mm -hmm. And I know we're talking about nerf two and pro tandem here, but uh, I. Uh, Personally, we used uh, yucca on a filly that had EPM. This is about 50, well, probably 20 years ago now. Uh, tremendous success. Turned her into a stakes winning filly, but uh, she had EPM pretty bad. But I, no direct experience uh, with EPM and NRF2. Okay. Um, Go ahead, on colic, uh, I haven't heard or seen anything about. Colic, colic, complicated comes from many different things. Um, there may be some benefit uh, when horses are on a steady state uh, pro tandem because they're just doing better all over. They're just in better health. Um, but I have not heard anything uh, that would lead me to say we could really make any real comment. EPM, uh, well, there's, Bud Monroe, who uh, was a consultant uh, for a number of years, passed a couple of years ago, um, 
was a rodeo hall of famer, um, as is his wife. Um, and I heard him speak, uh, I've talked to him personally about it too. And he <clears throat> had said that he had some horses with EPM um, that did better on uh, ProTandem. Um, and again, it's not a treatment for EPM. Uh, there's no way uh, you could say that, that, that it would be a treatment for EPM. But I think it's an issue of, uh, with EPM, it's an issue of recovery um, and just improved health um, because EPM, um, you know, you're not, you're not addressing the organism with, with protanum. You're addressing the effects that organism has had on the tissues, which is oxidative stress and inflammation. So the fact there is, is that uh, if there is any benefit, it's because of the, uh, uh, the healing power and the recovery um, that you would expect uh, in those kind of circumstances. Thank you for that. How about um, testimonies bone on bone in horses or minis? Any thoughts from either? I don't, I don't have anything there. Uh, we haven't had any racehorses in quite some time, but uh, um, I, on people, I, I, you know, I go to the college, but on, on horses, I don't know. I don't know. Good question. Yeah. People we go to collagen. So do you give your animals anything other than nerve too, like collagen or? We, we use, uh, NRF1, NRF2, and NAD, not, not to all of them. We, it, it depends on the, you know, on the horse, on the situation, but, uh, uh, we had, we had really good results with an old mare that had Cushing's, uh, with NRF2 and NRF1. This is several years ago. And, uh, so it, it depends on the situation on, on the animal. Thank you. Lee, do you want to add? Well, I think there'd be a scientific rationale for using NAD in horses. And you have, right? I have. Okay, good. We don't, and again, for tandem, none of these plants treat, mitigate, cure diseases. Um, they just activate this switch in every cell that protects us from all kinds of stresses and damage. Um, anything on uh, regarding the benefit of metabolic horses? Any documentation? You're on, Lee. <laughs> <laughs> well, you had your comment about uh, uh, Cushing's horse, so. Yeah. yeah, that does it. Yeah. Okay, and then um, something on any other videos. Comment, or comment, uh, Michelle, you mentioned the collagen. Um, there are collagen products out there that are widely available for dogs um, and horses. Um, and I would uh, think that uh, our product is probably just as good or better than any of those. Yep. Well, it is the only product that activates your body to make collagen again. Right. right. Yep. Be careful with it, particularly in dogs. Um, you know, that has some things in it that just they're not normally exposed to. So if you're going to try it in your dog, I'd use a very small amount to start with. And then uh, there was a question about other animals. Like how, how, how well do you do with cats? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, well, we've used, we've used pet tandem in our cats. Uh, it's uh, every cat is unique. And so we never have really found a uniform uh, way to, uh, to dose them. So you're on your own in that regard. Um, we've used, uh, put, put a small amount on, on uh, wet food uh, method and some, we would get away with that with some cats, other cats, uh, no way. Um, <laughs> it, you know, and I've, I've pilled our cats, but after a little while and, and all our cats, you know, they have their claws and, uh, and so they have, you know, the five points of contact. So, you know, that gets old in a hurry. So it's, 
You need just it. Like that. Thank you. I we're at four forty five, so um, we've gone forty five minutes, and and so I want to thank everyone for being here. I want to thank you, Bonnie, and you, Lee, for just generously sharing your wisdom and and experience and research and everything else. Do you have anything you want to say before we close? Well, it was a pleasure. And again, I really appreciate you, Michelle, for putting this together. And uh, it's just great to see so many faces and uh, friends and, uh, and glad everybody could get on. And again, it's always a pleasure to, to be with Bonnie um, anywhere, um, even though then whenever he's there, I'm not the most handsome one. <laughs> oh, 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 that's tough. Even even a warm wrestle, right? Oh yeah. my gosh. I have to say I love you too so much. And I am just so incredibly grateful. I actually said all day today. I hope this is the first of many. And I'm sure that others that are here can think of thousands of people that they would like to bring here um, and to learn more and to impact more lives. I know that you have each changed my life in so many ways and your generous hearts um continuing to share even on a Sunday. I appreciate you so much. Thanks, Michelle. Thank you. See you, Lee. Okay. See you, Bonnie. Good night, Take everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.